Hey guys, welcome back to XX Wiki, your knowledge channel. Today's video is about the Lua people of South Sudan. So if you guys don't know, I'm actually from South Sudan as well. And I'm actually Denka from Awil and Jurisho, um, aka Luo from Bargazel. So this video is honestly very important to me. I'm learning a lot like you guys are learning on this video. So please be respectful in the comment section. Like I said, we're all Africans, we're all united, we're all one people. So please, no division and no tribalism in the comment section. But yes, I hope you guys enjoy this video about my people. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next clip. <laughs> So our first group it's the Jur Show of Bargazel. Um, they are found in the in the cities of Bargazel in Awil, Wow, Tonj, other parts of North and West Bargazel. And the Ulu population is estimated to be roughly around 171,000. So they are the eighth largest ethnic group in South Sudan. The Luo speak the Jur language, which is a northern Luo language, and are closely related to the Do Luo people of Kenya and Tanzania. But closest relatives to South, but the closest relatives in South Sudan is the Anuak and the Pari. <laughs> So the Luo Bargazel region in South Sudan are descendants of Dimo, the older, belt, the older brother to Naikango. According to the Luo's myths and oral history, Dimo was the direct brother who went into confrontations with his younger brother Naikango over royal spears. A royal spears in the Luo customs only carried by the head of the family, um, designated chief or king, known as Ruth in Luo language, the Ruth or the king in his turn recommends one of the family members that would take over the royal spears after his death. The Lu and Bargazel still practice this custom to the present day. The confrontations between Dimo and Naikango subconsciously led to the separation and migration of two brothers, Naikango and Gilo, to upper Nile states in South Sudan. The Lua main sources of economy are blacksmithing, agriculture, hunting, and production of bee honey and fishing. They have perfected these trades over centuries and have shared their knowledge with their neighboring ethnic groups. Their knowledge of geology and geography has helped them in surviving through their migration and settlement in new territories. It has also helped them coexist with, with and assimilate with other ethnic groups into with other ethnic groups into local groups in East Africa. The Luo mainly believe in traditional African religion, which have strong links to Judaism, Old Testament, and Christianity. The Luos believe in prophets, and they and they also use them as a link between them and the Most High, um, A.K.A. God. And the Luos knowledge acknowledge their being in relations to their ancestors, this receiving their blessings through them. Um. So I also found a, a video of um, a radio podcast on Facebook about the Luos and it goes into more detail about the Luos in Bargazel. So if you guys are interested, I will link the video down in the description bar for you guys. So our next group here is the Shat or the Thuri. So the Shat are made up of sub-tribes, so basically the Yabola who are located between Wau and Raga and the Adshana who occupied the territory between Maria Bai and Raga and the Shalku, who are between Awil and Raga. The Ashat number around 70,000 people. In Mugodum Yabura, Nekin in a one yard, and then my Adunia Bosarok, why my don yo? Call Mugodum Yabura, Nekin in a one yard, and then my Adunia Bosarok, why my don yo? The Shad are a part of the Luo group and link more closely to the Shaluk and Jo Luo 
a bag of cells was a Jewish show. They believed that Dimo gave birth to Otoro, who became the ancestor of the Thuri. They separated from the rest of the Lu and came to settle in their present place some 400 years ago. So the birthing and naming of the shiad is the firstborn must be delivered in the bride's parental home. The naming ceremony is performed after three or four days depending on whether the child is a boy or a girl. The child is made to hold three or four tiny pieces of grass, each carrying a particular name, which the child will have once it remains in its hands when it is dipped in warm water. The Balanda boar are an ethnic group numbering around 40 to 50,000 people living in Western Equatoria and Western Bagazel, and they speak the Balanda boar language. <laughs> The Boer are divided into two major sections, the river people who are part of the migration and the hill people who distinguish themselves into three independent clans known as the Fagea, Afragana and the Mbani. Their hero known as Boer, the eldest son of Nyakongo and also the founder of the Shaluk nation, the Shaluk nation and with the Bavari woman which is another Balanda um, subgroup. Um, founded the Boar. Um, Shaluk tradition has it that Boar did not relate well with his cousin Dak. He sought and was granted his father's permission to remain behind with his uncles when Nyakongo and his entourage decided to migrate northwards. The Boar lived closely with the Bavari until the Alzande invasion and, the, and ruled in the 18th century. The Boar the Bar people have no elaborate religions, belief, However, they recognize the existence of a supreme god or supreme being known as Juk and the spirits of the departed ancestors. They communicate with the spirits to fortune tellers, mediums, and medicine men and women. Many Boer people have converted to Christianity and few to Islam. The Boer society is organized into lineages and clans. They subscribe to social norms and customs but have been greatly influenced by their close association with the Bavari and the Azande domination. The Anuang people can be found in Gambela region in western Ethiopia, South Sudan, and Sudan. And they are a population of 200 to 300,000 worldwide and live in the Upper Nile in South Sudan. And also, Anuang basically means in English, I shared or to share. So the Anuak are also the first Nilotics to become fully Christian in South Sudan. Achiel, Aryo, Adak, Angwen, Abich, Abichel, Abrio, Abara, Abingwen, Apar, Apar Kachiel. So the oral history of Anuak was that women, as they went to fetch water, discovered a mysterious person with a fishing spear. This man would disappear into the river to avoid contact with the people until one day they managed to capture and bring him to the village and they called this man Ochowedoho, I hope I pronounced it correctly. Um, he however would not talk, eat nor drink. Um, so they were afraid that the stranger may have died of hunger, so Akongo told his small daughter to look after him. She took, him, she took water and, and food to him, which he drank and ate and developed a relationship with the girl. It turned out later that the girl had conceived. When he discovered that the girl was pregnant, he disappeared into the river leaving beads known as Ochwak, Ochwak, Nayolo, um, Garmoto and Ganga as gifts for the father of the girl. The girl gave birth to Gilo, who is renowned, who is renowned as the great grandfather of the Anyuak nation. When Yanyuak Nyai, known as King, passed away a few years ago, he is said to have gone back into the river 
like Ocho Wadoho. The Onyuak are strongly religious and have strong beliefs in spirits to which one returns when he dies or she dies. One can communicate with the departed through a medium or when one becomes possessed by the spirit. The Onyuak attach importance to Shin, Chin or Curse, Chin which is known as Curse and Git or known as Blessing and the two create an order in Anuak society. The Anuak have typical first, second, and third and twin names. So for a first, they will go for Omet or Amat, and second will be Ojulu or Ajulu, and for third will be Obang or Abang, and for twin will be a, a pu, Opu or Apu, or Ochan or Achan, or Okelo or Akelo, and birds with A, with O's and A dividing the women and female respectfully. So I'm assuming it's like Denka because my name is Ayak. So for my so if you're a woman you go with A and the man version will be Yak. So Ayak will be a woman and Yak will be a man. I guess that's how they do the they do it the same way as Denka culture. The Anuak society was originally divided into two large clans, the Tongoch and Tong Odola Odola, which were um, feuding and competing for dominance. The Anuak settled in big villages along the Akubo and Baro as well as Gilo rivers and there are several villages such as and there are several such villages. Each Anuak village has a, uh, a Nyai king or a Kujlok um, sub chief in control of the social and administrative matters of the village. Sorry guys, I actually don't speak Denka that well, so if I did speak Denka fluently, I'll be able to um, pronounce these um, words, but sadly, I'm an English speaker, so please forgive me. But let's continue on to the next Lua group. <laughs> So our next group here is the Acholi. So different accounts attest that the Acholi group was formed from different people who inhabited the area of the results of the Lu migration and therefore asserted that the Acholi are a product of intermarriages between the Lu and the Madi. Being Lu in language and custom and therefore closely related in history to the Alur of West Nile, the Chopandohola of Eastern Uganda and the Joluo of Kenya, the Shaluk, Anyok, and other Luo groups in South Sudan. Another legend asserts that Luo was the first man. He had no human parents. He is said to have sprung from the ground. It is taken that his father was Juk, known as God, and that his mother was Earth. The legend adds that Luo's son, Japati, whose mother is unknown, had a daughter called Kiliak. Um, Kiliak is believed to have conceived a son known as Lubango, whose father was said to be the devil. Lubanga or Lubango was the first in line of the Rot, known as the chiefs of Payera and the dominant Acholi clan. It is said to a uh, present day Acholi group migrated south to northern Uganda from the area now known as Bagazel in South Sudan in about 1080. Starting in the late 17th century, a new social political order developed among the Luo of northern Uganda, mainly characterized by the formation of sheepdoms headed by Rodi or Rot, which equals ruler. The sheep traditionally came from one clan, and each sheepdom had several villages made up of different clans. By the mid 19th century, about 60 small sheepdoms existed in eastern Acholi land. During the second half of the 19th century, Arabic-speaking traders from the north started to call them Sholi, a term which was transformed into a Choli. The traditional communities were organized by huts, and the men were skilled hunters using nets and spears. They also kept goats, sheep, and cattle. The women have accomplished agriculture, growing and processing a variety of food crops, including millet, simsim, groundnuts, peas, sorghums and vegetables. In war, the men used spears and long narrow shields 
of giraffe or ox hide. The Shaluk are a part of the Luo nation. Tradition has it that sometime in the 15th century, Nai Kongo, the founder of the Sholo nation, quarreled with and separated from Dimo and other, new, and other Luo groups in which Pach, somewhere in Bagarzel. Nai Kongo and his entourage of close relatives and friends chose to move northwards along the Nile in rafts and canoes, searching for a suitable place to settle until he arrived in the land of Otengo Daram. Through war and diplomacy, he conquered and through the course of time assimilated Otongo Daram, giving each and every tribe therein a name and a ritual to perform. Tradition has it that his son Dak was the most influential in the establishment of the kingdom. The Shaluk number around 500,000 and live in the west bank of River Nile between Lake No in the south and Kosti in the north. Some Shaluk settlements are found in the east bank of the Nile and extend as far as Anokdir in the east. The capital of the Shaluk kingdom is known as Pachadoho, Pachodo. Other important Shaluk historical sites are in Papawojo, Naiwal, Amdidengo, Wao, and Akuruwa. The major towns are Mal, uh, Malik, Malakai, Malkail, um, Kudhok, um, Kail Doro, Tonga or Tungu, and Wadakon. The Shaluk Kingdom is divided into north, known as Gar, and south, known as Wap. Um, the Shaluk language is spoken throughout the kingdom. It is close and related to other Luo languages of Anuak, um, Jurisho, Ari, Shiat, and Balanda Bor. It is also related to the Nuer and Dinka languages. The Shaluk recognize the existence of two spheres, the sphere of, of the spirits interacting with that of the living beings. There is a supreme being no, known as Yuk Ayam, Ayomo with his home somewhere in the sky named Pajok, where people don't do evil. There are also the spirits of departed ancestors and relatives whom one can address in times of distress and tribulations. The Shaluk believe that the ghost of somebody killed or murdered haunts the predator. Um, every Shaluk newborn is given milk names, um, the meaning of which may relate to the experience or circumstances the parents or close relatives. The prefix Naya, usually a female, but sometimes shared by male, for example, Okuch or Naya Kuch refers to famine, Oyo or Naya O, having been born on the road, and Achan Wanyo refers to coinciding with the arrival of an important person or relatives, and Ranyo or Aban, coinciding with death of somebody. Um, the Shaluk by tradition don't name a child after a living person. The Shaluk keep few cattle, goats, and sheep and engage in substance, in substance agriculture. The main crops are sir, gum, maize, simsim, and beans. And the Shaluks are also fishermen and exploit with ease the fish resources of the Nile. So there's actually a, a video on YouTube here called the Shaluk Kingdom and basically explains into more detail about the Shaluk people and how they were able to run the kingdom. So I have that video attached in the description bar for anyone that's interested in learning more about the Shaluk. So the marriage is the ultimate goal of every adult, male and female in the Shaluk um, culture. Courtship and intimacy can last up to a year or more. So once marriage has been decided on, the girl informs her mother, who then informs the father or parental uncle in case the father is deceased. A shy young man may inform his father through a friend, uncle, or somebody he trusts. Once the pseudo has been accepted and announced, the initial bride price is paid. The Shaluk diary is a minimum of 10 cows, 30 sheep, and goats. The marriage relationship does not expire or rust. It, is it, tightly, it tightly bonds the two families making divorce difficult, if not impossible, unless there are spectacular reasons. In case of divorce, the diary is returned, and the Shaluk practice pawn marriages even before the girl has been born. 
This is accepted in times of extreme stress and difficulties only. So our last group here is the Pari. So Pari oral history says that people migrated from the north and west to Lafon County, Equatorial Province, where they lived in six villages at the foot of Lee Paul Hill. Um, the total population is about 11,000, and their language is uh, very similar to the Anyuag. The two languages are mutually intangible. In terms of linguistics, next to Anyuag come Luo Bagazel, the Shaluk. However, the Choli language, although it belongs to the Luo group, geography closest to the Pari, among other groups, it is a bit, it's a bit distant. Oral tradition has it that all Luo used to live together at Wipach, somewhere in eastern Bagazel. Then they left because of the fights among the three brothers, Nyaikango, Dimo, and Gilo. There is another story of a fight among two brothers known as Gilo and Yutinho. So the first Luo groups that settled at the La Pol Hill was led by Dimo, who became the founders of Purangi village. They came from the area near Teriaka, Terikeka on the bank of White Nile, and although Lulubo land and Lokoya land, then a second Lua group migrated from the north, leaving Anyuak behind. Some settled at the hill and others proceeded southwards. It seems that those who lived further south it seems that those who lived further south later later formed different Lua communities in Uganda, Kenya and beyond. Those new settlers at the Lapel Hill eventually formed Bora, Pachua, Wayatuyo, and Anjoli Mir villages. And the last Lu group came from the north and became the founders of Kor village. It is remarkable that although the Pari is a Lua language and the bulk of the Pari ancestors came um, to settle at the Lupu were of Lua origin, the Pari are quite multi-ethnic in their origins. People acknowledge that when the first Luo people reached the Lupel, it had already been occupied by the non-Luo speaking people, and that there are a few clans of external um, origins like Lop Lopit and Bordenka, and many individuals and families from neighboring ethnic groups such as the Lopit, Lokoya, Lotuka, and Bari came to settle and absorb into the Pari community. Um, the Pari believed in Juk. Um, there are many places of joke, including La Pool, where offering sacrifices are made. They also said that joke is the it's like the wind; it's therefore everywhere. This is both good and bad for human beings. There are traditional healers, div um, diviners, or witch doctors. There are both men and women, and called ajawa. A dying person makes either a blessing or a curse, and the power of a curse is very much feared. At as it may bring disaster not only to individuals but to an entire community so that's the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed this video so far like share and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video should be next few days from now so yeah toodles <laughs>